Hello everyone and welcome to this week's garden tour. I actually don't have very great news today. I am having a bit of a challenge with the garden. Last week we went out of town for a few days to actually attend a wedding and when I came back the garden was infested with pests. When I walked into the plot there was so much damage on the leaves. The backyard was so pretty but now the leaves are full of markings and then I started looking a little bit more closer and I started noticing some cucumber beetles in the dahlias. And obviously we've been having trips for a while now. And the aphids. And the grapevine is full of the spotted lanternfly nymphs. They are changing color now, they're starting to get red, and it just feels so overwhelming. We are now exactly one week out of the wedding and I am very worried now that the flowers are not going to look good. If you see a bag here, I have already bought the organza bags and I have bagged some of the flowers already because on the rate that things were going I started freaking out and thinking that I'm not gonna have any flowers to make the decorations. We are gonna have a small wedding, a small party, but we still want it to look like a wedding so flowers are a very, very important thing and I'm just starting to get a little bit nervous right now. I'm going to show you guys around real quick around the garden. I want to show you guys the damage on that dolly over there left in there on purpose so I can show you what I kind of walked into once I got home after the last garden tour. The green stalks are also not looking super great right now. I ended up not putting the automatic watering system that they sent me and I deeply regret now because a lot of the tomatoes and the brown planter that's actually right below this camera actually really struggled with the heat. It was also very hot when we were gone. So anyway, this is my warning that the gardens are looking very nice anymore. Lots of pest pressure this year. I did not spend as much time in here as I usually do because I've been busy with a lot of other things. So at this point, I'm honestly considering harvesting everything next week. Not only the flowers, but also all of the vegetables and possibly even just get a first start for the fall. So I actually did sow some things in the plot just because I was kind of heartbroken so I wanted to put something in there but at this point I'm not hopeful anymore that things are going to grow especially with me not being here. But let's go take a look at the garden real quick now before this rain comes just so I can show you the backyard real quick and how the flowers are looking. I still have a good amount of flowers, the leaves look damaged but I'm thinking to you know just strip all the leaves off and wash the flowers before I take it up there because I also don't want to bring any pests to the location of our wedding too so uh, just a lot going on but let's get started here's a little overview how the garden is looking I was going to start showing those dahlias back there but I am going to start here with this beautiful root back yes just move the camera right here so you can see the green stalks are not looking very great they suffer while we're gone but let's start with the pretty things first at least so let's look at this beautiful root back here that is blooming now so unfortunately this is blooming a week too early I think that a lot of them are also already going to be old by the time that we have to cut to bring for the wedding so I'm a little sad about that but I'm thinking that I might cut these more open ones and see if these little ones will at least have some chance to open they won't be as big and beautiful as the first blooms but at least we have something to add some color to the other flowers that I'm gonna have because I really love this double red flowers here I know this kind of have more has more of a fall vibe but I think it mixed up with everything else is going to look really good I really like this one too but take a look at this guy you see how eaten up those petals are I'll still use it but it's just a little sad and heartbreaking to see you know put so much effort in growing things and then get kind of decimated by pests I have the leaves are super damaged as well all of the leaves almost everything that I have are like this those are leaf hopper damage and this one here look how sad this tomato and these beans look <laughs> look at this it's terrible those are spider mites I'm gonna flip it it's hard to see. It could be something else too. I always think it's spider mites when it's looking like this. And it's kind of yellowing. Maybe there's some blight in the tomato too. It's just everything is kind of going wrong. But I think I have some beans in here to harvest. Well, maybe not. I do have some on the green stalk. So there's some positive news there. Let's move to this side. I'll rotate the green stalk real quick. And I have those beautiful dragon tongue beans here. So I'll still harvest and eat this, not a problem. Wash them, cook them, it's gonna be okay. But this plant, it's very damaged. So I'm probably end up taking all these plants out. The, the other things, look at this tomato. It just dried out, you know, fried in the sun. It's so sad. 
we were gone and I thought it was gonna you know be okay because last week this wind sucked it so good uh, without me watering that much but the guys just got too hot so some of them the leaves got fried in there I also have a lot of bug damage on them these guys here also are looking super sad so just a little heartbreaking to look at that but this tomato here I think this one is still looking okay I don't know I'll leave this one here probably before we travel but this guy here also it's all you know damaged and I don't know hopefully I'll be able to have a good amount of flowers in here this dahlia here as I said I left to show you guys look how much the other one I showed last week I think was hard to see but hopefully this one is a little easier you see it's all brown full of spots so that's what's been kind of happening this one just opened it was too late for me to put the organza bags on it so it's also all damaged and I found like three cucumber beetles on this earlier I was just like I don't know a little heartbreaking for me but I put this actually here a couple days ago and there's one dahlia that's opening hopefully that one is not going to be damaged so I put them it was the bud was just like this and then it's now opening so hopefully they'll look nice and good for the next week I will go ahead and cut this off to stimulate those to grow a little faster just left here to say to show you guys and everything else in here is also kind of damaged to you see the calendula this has been happening to the calendula too but it's just getting a lot worse I did have leaf hopper damage in the calendula last year as well but it just just seemed to be everywhere this year you see here in the fever few and then the dahlia over here too uh, my dad is in the plot are, are looking not great they look like they have some viral infection too so it's just overwhelming to be honest but anyway these are the other buds that I covered so this dahlia plant is the Linda's baby and you can see that she's producing a lot this is one plant I kept cutting from it now we have all the side shoots so I'm not sure if all of them were still going to be good before we go upstate for the wedding but if I have a few of them I'll already be very happy this is the Cornell bronze there's only one but I think that will open in time for the wedding now there's another little one that might open or not we'll see and I have this scabiosa opening this is really pretty I love this color so this came in a mix I didn't know the color would be but I love this pink so much it's very beautiful I might have to cut this one out so these other guys bloom but I love how it's kind of airy you know and, and has a bunch of little buds everywhere I, I wish I had planted more actually now because I really like this one the sherry caramel flocks is blooming nicely too there's some buds here not sure also if we're gonna have enough or any for next week but we'll see the straw flower bachelor buttons they're all blooming I'm gonna take them so I'm gonna take everything I'm gonna cut everything that I can even if only for greenery you know to just try to make some pretty arrangements these guys here the straw flower they're getting too open they are also opening too fast it's been really hot here in the 80s and 90s so everything is kind of opening out of control the cosmos there's some extra fever fever in there but this calendula is looking pretty bad I also got some damage on this straw flower I think it's spider mites could be oh sorry leaf hoppers could be flea beetles it could be many other things that I don't even know but it just seemed to be happening everywhere the Lysianthus actually so far doesn't look like it has any bug damage in its budding so that's very good news I might have some of those for next week so I'm very excited about that I hope it does open just something you can't really control the sunflowers too let me show you guys that one's already dying I cut the one that was open next week and then two of more of them are opening there's one beautiful one opening up there Ooh, the camera got really dark I don't know it's a little cloudy but that one is also mixed none of them came just chocolate all of them have this orange-ish kind of red center next garden tour you can see better because it's not showing really good with this light here but anyway the last spur went to seed this is how the seed pods look like they're starting to crack open so I could collect seed from those already or probably if it falls we'll have seed self seen here for next year that's mostly it here for the backyard just hopefully trying to save the dahlias I'll see if I can harvest some of this beautiful root back here and 
Oh, we, actually, this wood pack is big, beautiful too. Sorry, I'm a little all over the place, but I just been kind of stressful time. I want to show this to you guys too. Isn't it beautiful? She's fully open. I cut some of the ones that were already open in the last garden tour to see if I can, some more I can open by next week too. So this has been the game now. Like I don't know when to cut. I don't know if I should leave them in there. I guess we'll find out what's going to happen in just about a week or so. So with that said, I'm filming this video now on the weekend, but I'm probably only going to be seeing this maybe on Monday on Tuesday, depending on how fast I can edit this. And next weekend is actually already the wedding. So I'm not going to have time to post things here in real time. What's going to happen is I'm going to film as I go, film another garden tour right leading before we leave. Then I, will film, I hope to film another video harvesting everything to show you guys actually how many flowers I got. And then I'll try to film some snippets of us, you know, trying to make everything, we're doing everything ourselves. I'll see what I can do there. But if you want to see things in real time, just give me a follow on Instagram, Mars Garden Kitchen, the same handle is here. And I'm going to try to post things more behind the scenes in real time back there on the stories. Just give me a follow there. If you are not not following me yet, I will put a link in the description box below too, if it's easier for you to just click on there instead of looking up my handle. But anyway, exciting times i'm nervous uh, overwhelmed lots of things going on but hopefully everything's going to work out next week now let's go take a look at the plot i am a little worried about sunflower steve's sunflower they are a bit behind and the pro cut sunflowers are actually already opening so kind of wish i could slow down those ones and hurry up the other ones but this will be the game of this week i am i actually made a little space on my basement in a door that's a little cooler and to start harvesting flowers maybe this week and putting them in there to try to slow down the process we'll see i'll do the best that i can to try to have as many flowers as i can so we'll see how that's going to turn out actually let me harvest these beans before we go so we have something exciting on this garden tour at least i have some tomatoes to harvest there too so i should probably bring a basket with me but i'm gonna have those for dinner you know, finally having some fresh veggies from the garden. That'll probably make me feel a little better after all the stress with the pests and the flower and everything else that's going on. So, oh, that's a pretty good handful. There you go. Just a couple more in there. Okay, one almost fell. Got just a little nice handful in there. I might have some more here, actually. Yes, I do. Those ones look very nice, the pattern. This one looks a little old. I'll just open and eat the beans inside. And that's it. I'm gonna take out this plant. So this one is completely done. So we made it here to the plot. You can see all the bags in there. It's a little noisy, but we're gonna have to go with it anyway. So I'm just gonna start from the beginning here. And you can already see the grapes that I have bagged. So I didn't bag all of them, just a few, because I wanted to use some of the bags for the flowers as well. If you missed last week's garden tour, I said that I was going to bag these grapes. Someone suggested that I did use organza bags. I did find these really big ones. I just searched larger organza bags on Amazon. I can put a link to these ones if you guys are interested. But I actually like them. It's a good size. It fits the grapes perfectly. So this is obviously a lot of grapes for us. Let me show you guys all the grapevine. So if you come here underneath, we have tons of grapes still. Lots of, look at this size, lots of clusters. But I didn't add anything in the bags in there yet. I just kind of cut the ones that I thought it would be easier to harvest. So I bagged the ones that are a little bit easier for us. And some on this side too. And once I harvest all these flowers, I'll use the rest of the bags to cover some more grapes. So, before we even get to the past issue that I said in the beginning of the video, let's look at this sunflower seed sunflowers. Look how tiny these buds are. So I'm actually afraid that I spent all this time and got these nice seeds and energy to put these sunflowers in here for them to not bloom for the time of the wedding. So that would be very devastating because the reason why I am growing them is because I wanted to have some of those beautiful flowers in the wedding decor and possibly my 
by the bouquet and all of that, but it's looking like they're close. But they're still very small compared to all my other sunflowers, so I'm a little concerned. If they bloom after the wedding's done, I mean, there's uh, we're gonna leave for Brazil for a month anyway, so I'm gonna not, not even see them, which is very heartbreaking. So cross your fingers for me and put in the good, all the good vibes you can, and the wishes that these sunflowers will open in a week. We're leaving on Thursday, so I'm planning to harvest everything from the garden on Wednesday. So they will still have a couple days to open on Saturday. I do want to make out of decoration on Friday, but it is what it is. If I have to add them after or add them close and they will open to the next day, it's fine. But I just really hope that they open. I mean, some things are looking nice. Let's take a look at the zinnias. Here they are, nice and colorful. So this is a good sign. <laughs> Gotta breed. <laughs> they, I'm gonna harvest some of them today because some of them are good you see you, you kind of shake them if they're firm it's time to harvest and hopefully in a few more days some other buds will open i don't know seems like they're taking a long time to open but because it's getting really hot maybe there is a chance more like this i think it would probably open on by next week zinnias have to be harvested when they're fully open if you harvest when they're not see that one is, let me see how this one is looking I did it earlier and we'll see how the neck is, I don't want to broken, break, but if it's flimsy like this, it just flop on the vase. So I need it to be fully open and nice and firm like this before I harvest. So we'll see. Also cross your fingers for me and hope that I can harvest some of the zinnias too. Now that it's take a calm overview, I try to slow down a bit. Let's look how everything's looking and decided in general. I will show you guys the past damage, but first let's look at these straw flowers here. As I mentioned, they are opening a lot faster than I wish they would. So I'm gonna have to probably cut them this week already, or maybe Monday, I'm thinking. We'll see, this, probably see, we'll be seeing this after that I cut them, but at least these bigger ones, the super open ones, I wanna cut them out. Maybe I'll leave some of the side shoots in there, see if they open a little more. But I kind of feel sad that I grew all these beautiful straw flowers and they're a little, little bit too older, too spent to be cut and they're probably not going to last a whole week. At least not the apricot ones. The white ones are actually looking great. So this is good. None of them are open yet. They have some smaller buds that probably will open a little more with the week. Even this one that's a little bigger, it's not showing the yellow center yet. So I might take this one, but everything else is looking on track. So at least with these ones, I'm feeling a little bit confident about it. All of them still have the bug damage. You see this dolly over here? It's terrible. It's I think it says everything. Spider mites, li mite, leaf hoppers, spider mites, sorry, leaf hoppers, and probably even some sort of disease, you know, some virus or something, because all of the yellowing. Those ones too. And these guys here, not only they're having the leaves damage, which they always kind of do, but this year I'm just noticing a lot more than usual. Their leaves are also kind of curling. Let me see if I can find a good example here. See how they are kind of curling next to the... That one is a good one and kind of browning. So I don't really know what's happening, but everything seemed to have happened at once. And it's a little hard to believe, but... Most of these straw flowers here are yeah, having a bit of a hard time and getting a little fried too, a little brown in the edges, so I don't know. The snapdragons are still blooming, thankfully, so I might have a few to harvest with me too. As I say, I'm gonna harvest any, everything since I'm gonna be away, so even if things are not open yet, just like this, I'll try to harvest for greenery, and hopefully they'll hold up okay, they won't flop anything, but I'll do an experiment, and that, Salmon Clark Zinnia, oh sorry, Salmon Clark, Clark, no, Elegant Salmon Clark, yeah, oh my god, my brain today, it's all dried out already, so the, the seeds here are also, the seed pods are looking like they're ready to harvest, Let's see if I can zoom this in here, they dry out, I'm going to take one out, hopefully it's easier, they dry out, and they sort of open on the top, so if you flip this in your hand, a lot of the seeds will fall in there. There you go. You see the seeds in here? So you can collect this for next year. Since I only had this variety, I don't have to worry about cross-pollination or anything like that. So then I can just save this and plant for next year too. But this is probably, I'm just gonna 
keep planting this for the pollinators. If I leave this in here, I'm just gonna actually go ahead and throw the seeds in here. They'll probably self seed and come back next year. We'll see, that's what I'm hoping for. The yarrow here, I mentioned it was a little bit sick. I know I was not very clear about it in the last video, sorry. I was also a little rushed. But these guys were not looking very great. Now they're looking a little better. They still have bug damage on them. Oh, you see the leaf hoppers? You see? I don't know. They, it's a few, there's just like a cloud. Oh my god. When I came here, after the uh, wedding that we went to, I just, the whole garden, I would move and there were just like tons of leaf hoppers going everywhere. But there is still a little damage, but there's lots of new buds. So I'll probably be able to harvest from these, which is good. Another flower that hopefully I can rely on. These onions, my bud, my not, my flower, my not, I don't know. And mainly what I was concerned with the pest was the rudbeckia bed, because I really like the way the rudbeckias are looking. I did bag most of them because I didn't want the bugs to be on the flowers. I saw some of them on the flowers. They got, these guys were like closed more like this a couple days ago. Now they're open. Oh, look how beautiful this is. They're mostly opening. So, oops, I don't want them to damage too much the leaf. But I'll see if I can, you know, that way protect them a little bit. But look at these leaves over here. It's insane, right? And this guy, poor thing. So yellowing, not looking very healthy. The tomatoes in here are also full of damage. It's just heartbreaking this year. It's just been... I don't know, I couldn't keep up and now I just feel like it's a little bit too late, everything's going down. This is a hollyhock I planted and it's also all damaged with something. You see that? It's kind of sad. All these bugs. <sighs> oh well. This dahlia here too, probably gonna be done. That dahlia not gonna do great so trying to grab one flower from it and probably gonna have to cut it down. The dahlias on this side too are also looking like they're struggling. This guy looks like totally sick, completely sick. That one's down there. If anybody knows what those yellow things, patches are, I was researching and this, people say it might be a virus and leaf hoppers can transfer some virus. Look at this. So that's the reality of the garden at this moment. Very heartbreaking. I did. I harvested some sunflowers from here. I'm sorry if I'm still going too fast, but you see these little dots in there? There are sunflowers that are looking like this. This one's almost ready to harvest. If I can see a little color and all this green stuff has actually opened a little more, I'll harvest like this to try to slow them down. Because it's hot, as I mentioned, they're opening really, really fast. Let me check out this guy. Yesterday, that was a little, yeah, this is probably ready to harvest. I would probably, I'll definitely try to take this one with me today, see if I can slow it down. And I have to have spent some time to come here and clear all of this dead stuff or these other things that are, you know, just, look at those beans, all just full of past damage and disease and stuff, because that's probably helping with the problem, but I haven't had the time yet. The sweet peas, completely went to seed. I have to take this out too. Oof, but we have some harvest here too. Look, there's some beans. Those are a little bit too small. I like to harvest them more like this. I did bring a basket with me, so I'll harvest some more beans now to add to the ones. Oh, look, it's kind of loaded. This one's a volunteer, which is great. I didn't have to plant this. And now I have from one plant, there's all of these beans. Very nice, looking happy. I might need my two of my hands too keep harvesting this but the plants is also sick everything is sick this year see also very damaged so the ones that are below here I don't see it anymore maybe animal took it but there's also some tomatoes in this that I have to harvest let me see I saw two red ones in there there they are and look at this in so I'll open this here it's looking a little better because not for the bugs the bigger animals don't come the little bugs like leaf hoppers they will still come here look at the tomato the sun gold tomato over there it's not looking great <laughs> neither this this sorry neither is this guy oh they're pretty ripe I almost so let me get this and this and this plant's probably done it's looking really small and it's all sick too and I'll grab my basket and keep harvesting those sun golds as well 
Never mind, I'm coming back. I actually didn't bring the heart basket. My god, my head. I took it and probably just left my home, but I have a bag with me, so I'll put them in a bag. Oh, it's a tomato jungle over here. Hopefully there's no rodents or anything there. Let me get this guy that I see. Also, this is from the New Yorker tomato, these red ones. And then the sun goes. There's our guys are more delicate. I'm not gonna get them all. Just the ones that are really ripe. Just for a little dinner tonight. There's some below there too. My god. Those are a bit too low. I might leave those in there actually. Okay, and I'll probably get some of this basil later. Anyway, this is the rest of the stuff that I got. It's a very skimpy harvest compa compared to last year, but you know what? At least it's something. At least we're bringing something home. And we'll look at the rest of the flowers now and be done with the tour. There is some rain coming. Just have been ha like having the worst luck with filming this garden tours. When I have time, then it's like rain or do a garden tour before, a week before. I had to harvest in a rush because the rain was coming too. But anyway, enough complaining. Let's look at the side of the garden now. This little part here is actually my favorite part because we have this purple larkspur and we have some orange cosmos blooming there. This cosmos in here and this new dahlia. Let me look at her. Well, she's just gonna be a simple single one it's from C2. But I kind of like it. I bagged this one to see. It's looking like it's gonna be a purple one to see if I can save two. Well, that's our little corner back there, a little wildflower meadow, I guess I tried to do there. And here, on this edge here, again, the more poppies, I took them all out. And I tried to actually water this morning, but it's, so it's looking pretty dry again. So hopefully, be, so I guess it'll be good to have some rain. But here's another of the Pincantia flower. This one looks like it's going to be red. I bagged this one because I saw a little worm in here. So I decided to bag this. And I also bagged the asters because there was a beetle, cucumber beetle, trying to get in both of them. So actually I rinsed, I sprayed them with water, rinsed, kind of like shook it around to make sure there are also no leaf hoppers in there. And then I bagged it. So hopefully they will be okay. In this area here, I planted some okra. So that's why I put it this screen. Nothing will have come up yet. At least there's weed seeds in there, but no okra. This is a, gonna be a green one and a red one. So two rows and I'll thin them up. Hopefully they will sprout before I leave. And here is my little dahlia patch from seed that's not looking great either. I have a little guy here that even though I put a bag, it also still looks very bug damaged actually. Is that a worm inside there? I don't know if you can see. Let's see how this other guy is going to look. I might have to remove this bag. And over here I actually threw some cover crop. I put in some bookweed seeds. I have no idea if they are still there or if you know, the birds ate it. We'll see when I come back from vacation. But I didn't want to leave an empty spot in there. And that's it. So <laughs> that's looking more green, not as bare. But that's the overview on how the garden is looking right now. You know, not as healthy as usual, as the past couple of years, I guess. But that's the thing with gardening. Every year is different. And that's always next year. So. I am a little sad, but it's okay. I learned my lesson too, and next year I'll try to find a few other ways to maybe protect this or, you know, do some sort of pest control also as a prevention method, like some beneficial nematodes on the soil or something in the fall. I'll think about it, but this year was really harsh with the pests. It was a pretty hard <laughs> learning lesson for me. All right, guys, so that will be it for the garden tour today. Thank you so much for bearing with me and a lot going on. And it's hard for me to keep up and YouTube does take a lot of work with finding time to come and film and edit and all of that. I'm grateful for everyone that is here and is still following the journey. So I'll try my best to actually post stuff from the wedding and to post another garden tour and to post a harvesting video. I don't know what I'm going to be able to edit those. I hope that I can edit before we go to Brazil, but at least the last garden tour would be nice to have, but the plan is, I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the middle of the video, if I did, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I will try to have these videos to go on YouTube while we are in Brazil. So it might seem that we are in the garden, but we will not be. So if you want to follow real time updates from the wedding and from the vacation, please follow me on Instagram. I'll do my best to post as much as I can there. And this will be it for this week. Let's hope for the best. Next garden tour, you'll be seeing everything that we'll actually be able to use for our big day. So thank you again. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you 
next time.